Welcome to part two of counterfeit reality. Did you know there is even a counterfeit reality within Christianity itself? We think we can have different opinions on foundational issues such as creation or evolution or even six days versus millions of years. And we can still just get along. That is just illusion. This counterfeit reality invades all aspects of culture. It's not just the speculative science. What is the difference between science and science fiction? Somebody tell me what the difference is. Science fiction is make-believe, but would you not agree that there are elements of science in science fiction? Yeah, there are elements of science in Star Trek, Star Wars, you know, Jurassic Park. There are elements of science in that. What's another, what's, so what's the difference? What's the difference between science and science fiction? Science is observational, science fiction is imaginative, but are there not theories out there that have to be tested and weighed that at first appear to be imaginative, but turn out to be sound science? Galileo, Kepler, Copernicus. What is it? What is the, the, the distinction between the two? Well, I noticed that when you all came into this room, that you came in through the doors. Nobody came in through the ceiling. Nobody arose through the floor. But in science fiction, in Star Trek, what happens? Beam me up, Scotty. Okay. We'll be breaking fellowship with this man right here. I can flush him out every time. You see, here's the difference. The distinction is that science is constrained by reality. Science is constrained by reality. And what we have here is a counterfeit reality that has been imposed upon our culture, and the most effective way of doing that is through the media, especially films, movies. Movies are the most powerful teaching tool in the culture. In fact, it even affects our view of the past. What is it that you call it when you longingly look to the past? What do you call that? Nostalgia. What? Nostalgia. Nostalgia. Yeah. It's a longing look at the past. And we look at the past through the present from an evolutionary set of glasses, do we not? How many of you have been told by some parent or grandparent, when I was your age... I walked uphill to school through five feet of snow both ways. How many have heard something like that, okay? Now, barefooted, that's right, barefooted, okay? With two broken toes, I don't know, whatever. But you know what the problem with that is? Those of you who raised your hand, you're doing the same thing to your younger siblings. When I was your age, mom and dad never let me get by with that one. How many have said that recently? There you go. You see, we think the good old days are back there. The good old days, right? You know what the problem with the good old days is? They never existed. They never existed. Ask your grandparents if they want to go back to outdoor toilets. <laughs> Ask them. And you know what they're going to say? Everybody look at me and say, no, no. In fact, what does Scripture teach us? Scripture teaches us something far different. Scripture tells us in Ecclesiastes 7, the day of one's death is better than the day of one's birth. Isn't that odd? My, uh, my sister-in-law just had a baby recently, and my wife comes from a large family, and so they were all just celebrating. She's got four or five sisters, and they were just, oh, cute little baby, oh, baby, oh, the baby, oh, baby, baby, baby. Okay? We celebrate what? Birth. What do we mourn? Death. But look at reality here. Look at reality. Better is the day of one's what? Death than the day of one's birth. You know why? Life is hard. Life stinks at times. Does it not? Yes, yes it does. Yes, it does. And yet, we don't look back. Many of you are getting ready, ready to be graduated from, from high school. Some of you are looking forward to the time when you're graduated from college. 
okay? You're always looking where? Forward. You don't want to go back, right? In fact, we who are steeped in a counterfeit reality must tell the world that your best time is when? After you die. Because you can, then you get to be with your creator forever. In fact, again, Ecclesiastes tells us this. The end of the matter is better than its beginning. We have been so steeped in a counterfeit reality that we can't recognize even how we view the past without being affected by an evolutionary worldview. How many are familiar with what this is? SETI. How many know what SETI is? Put the big dishes out there, right? And they were listening for what? Signals for intelligent life in outer space. This counterfeit reality must be addressed. And it was started, this whole idea of search for extraterrestrials was started by a film that was very impactful, a film that, that occurred before many of you were born. You may recognize it. It's an old film. You'll see how old it is. line, right? This is what? Reality, Greg. Now, that's a clever line in a film that is a science fiction film. This is reality, Greg. But that's what we hear, isn't it? That's what we hear. Now, we could talk for an hour on why extraterrestrials do not exist. And if you want to know the biblical reason why they do not exist, you can see me afterwards. But we need to be people of the book. We need to be wise in whom we trust. Are we going to trust God's word or man's wisdom? That's what it really comes down to, isn't it? That's what you've been hearing all week. And Jesus said this. He said to the Father, He said, I'm glad that you hid these things from the wise and intelligent and revealed them to babes. The counterfeit reality even affects our quest to become our own creators. You may recognize how that theme was played out in this particular film. Attention NS5s. There is a robot in this formation that does not belong. Identify it. One of us. Which one? One of us. Robots, you will not move. Confirm command. Command confirmed. Murder's a new trick for a robot. Congratulations. Respond. Very interesting premise is that we can create sentient beings. Robots that then become sentient. In fact, this particular robot at the end of the film, for many of you who saw it, what does he become? He becomes the Messiah. He becomes the Savior for his robots. Now, am I saying don't see this film? Everybody look at me and say, 
No. What I'm saying is think your way through the film so that you are not taken captive by counterfeit reality. But you can use it to start conversations with those around you. You can begin to use it. It is the touch point on the culture. It's Acts 17. Paul in Athens. This is the pagan altar. And you can use it to start conversations. Movies are not entertainment. Movies are the most powerful teaching tool in the culture. In fact, it's interesting watching you watch the film. Because as soon as a clip comes on, some of you are going, Oh, I saw that film. I didn't like that film. I liked it. I thought he did a good job. Oh, I hated that film. Everybody's got an opinion about what? Movies. It's the touch point in the culture. It is a conversation starter. You can use it to begin the conversation. Unfortunately, what happened in this film is what the Bible says, and that is they worshipped and served what? The creature rather than the creator whose name is blessed forever. This counterfeit reality even affects our quest for meaning and significance. You may recognize that in this particular film. This is the construct. It's our loading program. We can load anything from clothing to equipment, weapons, training simulations, anything we need. Right now, we're inside a computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? <laughs> your clothes are different. The plugs in your arms and head are gone. Your hair has changed. Your appearance now is what we call residual self-image. This... This isn't real. This isn't real. Now, can you use that to start conversations? Wow, did you see that? What do you mean by this isn't real? In one sense, the Matrix got it right. We are trapped in what? We are immersed in a counterfeit reality. It is all around us, and it comes at us all the time. The problem with the matrix is it was so syncretistic, it borrowed from everything. I've had many Christians come up and tell me, Oh, dude, the matrix, yeah, man, that was biblical. <laughs> was it? What was Neo? Well, he was the new man. Ah, the Messiah. You got Nebuchadnezzar. You got Zion. Right? But was it? No, it was very syncretistic. The, the notion was, the message was, that each one of us can become what? Our own Savior, our own Messiah. Now, am I saying don't see it? Everybody look at me and say... No. What I am saying is think your way through it. Think your way through it and then use it. Turn it into a pulpit from which you can proclaim the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In fact, once again, we are warned. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy or empty deception according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. Don't get what? Captured.